Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I have a very, very, very exciting romance trope video. This is the Hero Falls First trope. I adore this trope, okay? Give me a man who absolutely falls head over heels in love with a woman, like from the get go. I love it. I love it so much. I have already made one of these videos before with different recommendations. So if you want more recs, that video is going to be linked down below if you want to go check that out if you haven't seen it yet. But I have 10 more recommendations for you. So let's get started. First, I have one of my favorite books from 2022. This is Broken Whispers by Neba Altaj. This is a mafia romance between Mikhail and Bianca. It's also arranged marriage. Mikhail definitely falls for Bianca first because Bianca doesn't know who Mikhail is at the beginning of this book. Bianca I believe is from the Italian mafia. She is the daughter of like the Italian mob boss and then Mikhail is kind of like the right hand man to the pecan, pecan, pecan from Russian mafia I think. I don't know. So many different mafias but they're from different mafia groupings, families, whatever you want to say. And he has been tasked to marry Bianca to form an alliance between their families. And Loki, Mikhail is super into doing this because he has been pining after and basically falling for Bianca even before this point. Bianca is a very talented ballerina. She performs at the local ballet. He has been watching her perform for so long. It's been looking after her and just watching her from a distance for so long. And so he jumps at the chance to get in this arranged marriage with her. Bianca has to cut her dancing career short because she was in an accident that uh, hurt her back really badly. And it also caused her to have, um, I believe like vocal cord paralysis or something along the lines. It's very painful for her to speak. And so she communicates via ASL. She's very nervous, but is willing to marry Mikhail, a man she does not know. Um, and so obviously it's a little bit awkward at first when the two of them get married because they are strangers. But uh, throughout this book, they definitely fall in love with each other and Mikhail kind of reveals his feelings and it's just in awe of this beautiful, amazing, strong woman. Like I love Mikhail so much. He was so obsessed with Bianca, like he is everything. For contemporary novella, I have Breaking the Bully by Jessica Kane. This is the romance between Moore and Allie and this kind of starts out when they are in high school. In the early years of high school, they were friends, they talked to each other um, and Moore definitely just fell in love with Allie. Fell completely head over heels in love with her. But then Allie has a very traumatic home life. Her dad is not the best person and he figures out that Allie's been talking to Moore and tells her basically that bad things will happen if you don't stop talking to him. And so she has to cut Moore out of her life and Moore doesn't know why. He's just so angry about the situation that the woman that he loves has just cut him out completely. So he starts bullying her to just get like any reaction whatever out of her because she's just like a blank blank face in front of him, like won't show any emotion. So he just tries everything in his power to get something, some rise, some emotion, some communication out of her. So he decides to bully her. And then it's a few years of them going through this and he finally figures out why Allie did what she did. And he is utterly devastated. And there begins the ultimate grovel. This is one of the only bully romances I actually like. <laughs> I feel like Jessica Kane did this really well. I normally don't like bully romances. I feel like it's not redeemable, like some of the bully aspects, but I feel like more in here is definitely just in love with Allie and just wants to feel something, like wants her to feel something. He feels like she's this granite statue now because of something, like he doesn't know what happened to her. So he's trying to get anything, any emotion out of this woman. So trigger warning here for domestic abuse. Her father is very abusive, so please be aware before you go into it. Next, I have a Ruby Dixon book. Obviously, this is Barbarian Lover. This is book number three in the series. This is the romance between Ahako and Kira. And man, this one is really fun. This is like the very beginning of the series. This is book three. As you can see Kira on the front, she was the human woman, a part of like the women who crashed on this ice planet um, who got put with like the hearing device. And it's very painful. She can't even like lay on the side, on this side because it's just so painful. Um, and she has just been dying for this thing to get taken out of her ear, like 
she's so sick of it. Um, but then all of her friends around her, her new human friends, all of them are finding their mates and getting resonated to other people. And she really just wants to wait for resonance. She feels like, like that's how she finds her person is to wait for resonance. A Hako in here is one of the male Sakui aliens on this planet. And right when he sees Kira, he knows that she is his. Like he knows that Kira is his mate, even though resonance has not happened between the two of them. He just knows deep in his soul, like that woman is his. So he decides to kind of like befriend her, get to know her, they play jokes or like he jokes with her. <laughs> um, and he like fully puts himself out there and is like, I want you, like, can we just be together already? She's like, no, like what happens when you resonate to someone else? Like, I don't want to be left high and dry. I don't want that to happen. He's like, don't worry about that. It's not going to happen because you're my mate. Like I, I know it. She's like, how do you know that? Resonance has not happened. <laughs> and so the two of them end up falling in love without resonance kind of like being there. I know some people who read the series aren't really a fan of the resonance aspect. So you might like this one. Hako in here though, definitely falls for Kira first and like just automatically knows that this woman is his. He's such a cute softie that is so funny too. Like there's so many funny aspects in here. I adore him. A monster romance that I'm here to recommend is A Soul to Keep by Opal Rain. This is the romance between Rhea and Orpheus. This book takes place on this like fantasy-esque realm. I don't want to say post-apocalyptic. I think it's fantasy. Where there are kind of like three different kinds of beings. You have humans, you have demons, demons eat humans, and then you have dusk walkers who are kind of like their own magical being in and of itself, um, but they have like magic to them. Humans are being eaten by demons and if demons eat humans, they get more powerful. And so humans definitely don't want demons to get more powerful. So this one group of humans, this one camp, uh, has a deal with a dusk walker who has this magic that'll put like a force field basically around their village uh, once a year, like it'll last a whole year. If once a year, they give him a bride. Um, so this year, the sacrifice that they're gonna give is Rhea, who's kind of like the town outcast. And so Rhea is in for a shock when she meets Orpheus and he is not this giant scary being you see on the cover. Like no, that's what he looks like. He's not that on the inside. He is just a sweet, soft creature who just wants love. He wants someone to love him. He wants someone to care for and he wants that to be Rhea. Um, he starts falling in love with her. He knows that this woman is supposed to be his, like right when they get to know each other. He is just so sweet. All he wants in life is a lifelong companion. He knows Rhea is gonna be that for him. He's just waiting for Rhea to realize that. All of his life, all these years, all these humans that have been sacrificed to him as a bride um, have all either died or run away from him and then they've died because of it, because the forest that he lives in is quite dangerous. And so he's trying in all of his power to keep Rhea safe, to make sure nothing like that happens because he's actually, for the first time, I feel like falling in love with one of the brides that are given to him. I don't wanna say anymore because I don't wanna spoil anything, but Orpheus falls like head over heels in love with Rhea from the get-go and Rhea takes a lot more convincing because Orpheus looks like Orpheus. <laughs> Um, but this one was so great. There are trigger warnings in here, by the way, for animal death, blood, gore, and killing. So just be aware of that. But I really love this monster romance. It was one of my favorites of last year. It was in my favorite romances of 2022 when it came to like the monster alien romance genres. Another one of my favorites from last year is The Orcs Bride by Lila Fay. This is a romance between Una and Ergen that takes place on a fantasy realm or a fantasy world, or I think it might be Earth, like in the way, 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 way future. I'm not sure though. I'm just going to say it's a fantasy world. Um, so Una is a human woman. She does not like orcs. Orcs basically kind of like run this fantasy world and she doesn't like orcs. Orcs killed her entire family, but she's forced to serve them, like be kind of like a serving wench. So one of the orc generals is in her village and kind of like overseeing this meal, like watching people at the head of the table basically. And he notices Una's standing up for herself when it comes to some of the orcs. Some of the orcs are trying to like grope her and touch her and she's not putting up with it. He devises this plan in his brain right from the get-go when he sees her and he sees this as the perfect opportunity to have a bride for himself. <laughs> Ergen is a general and the emperor of all of the orcs really wants Ergen to marry his daughter. He does not like said daughter. He thinks that she is just horrible, mean, rude, like one of the worst orcs ever. And so he's like, how do I get out of the situation? I can't really say no to an emperor. And so I think I'm gonna try and get married before I travel back to the empire. So he can't marry his daughter to me. Um, so when he sees Una, he's like, you know what? I think I'll marry her. She looks strong. She looks very capable of herself. Let's marry her. <laughs> and so he takes Una and is like, you know what? 
we're gonna travel to the empire she secretly wants to go to the empire by the way because she has this like lifelong goal to kill the emperor because she hates orcs that much um but anyway she agrees to go with him on this journey to the empire and he tells her throughout this whole journey i'm going to court you get to know you and by the end of it i'm gonna convince you to be my wife and she's like okay good luck I don't think that's gonna happen, but you can try. <laughs> and again, she has these alternate plans of just like getting to the empire to try and assassinate the like orc emperor, but she's not in for falling in love with Ergen because she definitely does that. But Ergen falls first. He realizes how strong and capable and amazing Una is like very quickly. And Una takes a little bit more convincing. And it's also different because he's an orc and she hates orcs. There's a lot going on in this book, but I really enjoyed it. If you want to read a really good entertaining orc romance, you have to pick this one up. Another monster romance is His Darkest Craving by Tiffany Roberts. This is another case where the hero falls first because the heroine doesn't know that he exists, basically. This is a romance between Sophie and Cruz. This takes place in our world. Um, so Sophie in here, I think she's like fleeing an abusive ex or something along those lines or abusive husband. I don't know, but she's kind of like trying to get away from civilization. She ends up renting this cabin in the middle of nowhere on the edge of these very dark wood. Um, she's a writer, so she's going to work on her writing while she's vacationing, basically. Sophie doesn't know this yet, but there's this entity, this shadow entity, if you will, that lives in the woods that is basically there to protect it from everything and anything. The shadow entity, Cruz, hates humans, hates him. Um, he's actually been cursed um, to be the shadow form, the shadow entity. And I think he's able to be in his physical form like once once a year. And that's like his fey, his real form. But anyway, the first night that Sophie's there, he figures out that a human is there and he's going to go kill it. He's gonna go kill this human, goes into her room and he's basically hovering over her and he can't do it. He can't kill her. And he's so mad at himself. He's like, why can't I kill this measly little human? Like, I don't understand. He's figuring out that he actually cares for this person um and so he slowly starts like falling for her while he's watching her so it's a little bit stalker e but it's just just shadow entity watching sophie when he finally makes himself known sophie like gets to know him she's very shocked at first obviously she doesn't know these shadow entities or anything paranormal exists in the world um but the two of them fall in love it comes to a point where he's able to be in his physical form that one day a year and things happen between the two of them and she's gonna try and break the curse. Like it's such a good monster romance, but Cruz definitely falls for Sophie first because he's able to watch her from afar for quite a while. And Sophie doesn't even know that he exists. The last monster one I have to mention is The Beast by Jenica Snow. Um, this is just a shorter Beauty and the Beast retelling. This is basically like the animated Disney version of Beauty and the Beast, but way hotter. And the beast doesn't turn into a man. He's a beast the entire time. So there's no curse or anything like that. Um, but the beast falls first because you have another situation where the heroine doesn't even know that the beast exists. The beast ends up sneaking into town every so often to kind of stalk and watch this woman that has basically just entranced him. It is Belle and he decides to make her his and he figures out the best way to do this is to blackmail her father to give Belle to him. Belle ends up becoming his captive and she reluctantly falls in love with him. Um, she's very nervous at first. Like obviously there's this beast that has taken her. But like being the Beast fashion, Belle ends up falling in love with the beast. Next are my historicals. This is How to Pursue a Princess by Karen Hawkins. This is book two in the Duchess Diaries series. Um, I do recommend reading them in order just because like I love these books so much. Um, but you technically probably can read it as a standalone. Each book in this series is about one of the Balfour sisters um, going to a house party at their godmother's house. Each girl's godmother helping her find a husband basically, like setting her up. Lily ends up going to one of the house parties and ends up meeting a Prussian prince named uh, Wolf or Wolvinsky. And um, he, yeah, he's a Prussian prince, but Lily's family is going through some money troubles and she has like figured out that she has to marry for wealth. She has to marry a rich man to save her family from going destitute. And even though she's falling in love with this Prussian prince, he's made it known that he has no money. Even though he's a prince, he's not wealthy at all. This is a lie. <laughs> Wolf lets this known because he wants a woman to fall in love with him based on who he is as a person and not because of his wealth and his money. And so Lily and Wolf are like falling in love with each other during this house party but Lily has to kind of put him at arm's length and put him aside at one point and is very devastated about it because she wants to put her family first. There's more happening in here. Wolf is trying to like convince her like that they are in love and that she should pick him out of everything. And 
Ah, oh, it is so good. Wolf falls for Lily hardcore first. Like he, it's love at first sight for him immediately. And um, I thought he was adorable and so sweet, but I also wanted to hit him over the head sometimes just because I wanted him to tell her that he has money. It's okay. <laughs> Next, I have Elisa Kleypas book. This is book number three in the Hathaway series. This is Tempt Me at Twilight. Look at this beautiful step back, by the way. I just had to show it off. I love it. This is a romance between Poppy Halloway, one of the Hathaway sisters, and Mr. Harry Rutledge. Poppy and her family are staying at a hotel that Harry owns. And while Poppy is like running around trying to catch one of her younger sister's like many pets, she ends up bumping into a man named Harry. Right when Harry bumps into Poppy, right when he meets her, he knows that there's no other woman for him. Like Poppy is end game. And who will even sabotage her relationship with another man to do that. He's gonna he's gonna ruin her relationship with another man, a man that she's in love with, in order to make Poppy his. I wasn't a big fan of the lying and the scheming, okay, when it came to Harry. However, you cannot discount that Harry was definitely spitting with Poppy from the beginning. So we love to determine ma'am, okay? I'm not gonna lie about that. Poppy in here is an absolute gem. I adore her. This is an amazing book, a part of the series. This whole series in general is absolutely fantastic. Um, but this couple I felt like was great and Poppy definitely is very reluctant to fall for Harry because she is in love with another man or claims to be. So um, there's just a lot of emotional, emotional stuff going on in this one. And the last one that I would love to mention is The Making of a Highlander by Elisa Braden. This is the first book in one of her series. What is the series title? Ah, I can't remember. It's a part of the Midnight in Scotland series. There we go. I'm not good with remembering series names. Anyway, um, so Annie in here is our heroine and her village labels her as mad. They think she's crazy and like talks herself all the time, but no one knows that Annie can actually see ghosts and she's just talking to ghosts. So it's a historical romance with like some paranormal aspects to it. Her best friend is actually a ghost and the ghost has disappeared and she figures out the only way that she can get her best friend back is to marry a lord. There's like this prophecy or something that she reads, this fortune that is told to her and she's like, okay, the only way I can get it back is to marry a lord. Okay, I guess I gotta go do that. She's not the lord marrying type though. Let's just say that. So she ends up across an Englishman. His name is John and she like kind of figures out this deal with him. She's like, okay, you need to teach me how to be like an upstanding lady so an English lord can fall in love with me. And then in exchange, I'll help you with uh, winning the Highland Games. Like he wants to compete in the Highland Games. But obviously as the two of them spend more time together, they fall in love. John ends up falling in love with Annie super quick, like super quick. Like I love how devoted he is to this woman. Their bantering was 10 out of 10. I loved it, so entertaining. Like, I think a lot of people told me this gives a lot of like Brave vibes, like the Disney movie Brave. Like that's who Annie kind of like reminds them of. So, like she's very independent, very stubborn. Um, and John is just trying to like poke under that skin and get under her skin and just like have her see how much he is in love with her. Like she doesn't need to marry an English Lord. Like he is right there. Like he's right there in front of her. Anyways, there you have it. Those were some romances where the hero falls in love first. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, let's see. You can leave me a crown emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.